Uh, welcome back guys, Mr. Bennett here. Um, just to review what we did in the previous video, um, we obviously looked at the trapezium method and uh, what we did is we broke these into four different trapeziums and we worked out the area of each of these. Um, and then that gave us a good approximation of the area of uh, the area under that particular curve. Right, so if we use the same curve, the second method we're going to look at is is a concept of breaking this into upper and lower rectangles. So for that for an increasing function like this one is, we always use the left hand point for our lower curve. So if I break this into uh, rectangles, so you can see the rectangle there, and then that point over here becomes my next rectangle, and then that becomes my next rectangle over here. Alright, so you can see I'm having a, a underestimate. Um, so this will be the area of my lower bound. Okay, so if we're looking at the values that we have here, now each of these particular rectangles has a width of a half, as you can see. Because right? I set that by dividing that area into four different rectangles. So if we do the area now, this point over here is zero. So if I'm working out my area, it's going to be zero times by a half plus, now the height of this rectangle is a quarter, so that's going to be a quarter times by a half. And then I have to add that to the next rectangle, which is going to be a height of one times by a quarter. So that's going to be one times by a half. And then my last rectangle's got a height of nine and four times by half. Now because these are all being times by half, a quick way of doing that is to simply say bring the half out as a common factor and then go zero plus quarter plus one plus nine on four. Keeping in mind but because it's a lower estimate we're using a left hand point so we can just use those points. So then if I want to work that out, that's going to be a half. Now, adding these, well, if I make that 4 on 4, which is what 1 is, then that becomes equal to 14 on 4. All right, so then that becomes equal to 14 on 8. Common factor of 2 there. So that becomes equal to 7 on 4 which is equal to 1 and 3 quarters, or 1.75. Alright, so that's my lower bound, my lower estimate. To do my upper one, what I have to do is use my right hand point. So I make this into my rectangle there. Okay, go across this side over here using my right hand point. And you can see it's going to be quite a big overestimate here, isn't it? Okay dodgy lines but you can get the idea of what I'm trying to do here. So again if we use the same sort of concept okay it's simply going to be uh, the height of my thing over there which is going to be a quarter times by a half plus the next one's going to be one times by a half add nine on four times by a half and then my top point up here is going to be equal to uh, 4. Okay, so that's going to be plus... Uh, so that's going to be plus 4 times by half. If we use the same technique as what we are doing before, is what we can say is that's going to be simply a half. And it's going to be simply a quarter plus... 1 plus 9 on 4 plus 4. So that's going to give me, well, I can make that equal to 4 on 4. I can make that equal to 16 on 4. So when we add those together, that's going to be 14. It's going to be 30. 30 on 4. So cross multiply there. That's going to give me 15 on 4, which is going to be equal to, uh, what is that, 3 and 3 quarters. Alright, so 
what we can say is, if we're thinking about that now, is that our area is greater than our lower value, which we know is 1 and 3 quarters, or 1.75, and we know it's less than 3.75. So what we know is that our true area is somewhere between there. Now I just want to show you how this works on GeoGebra. So a little program, it's a really useful program, and you've got access to this, it's a free program, and I'll dump this on the website for you. Um, what I've done is I've set this up as a polynomial up to power 3. Now these are my little slider buttons over here, so if I move my slider button, uh, I can change the function, so and that will change what it looks like. But what I've set it at to be, if you can see this function over here is that's going to be simply x squared, okay, with what we've got. And we've set our lower bound there to be 0, we've set our upper bound over here to be 2, so that matches with what we've got here. And what we've now got is we've got 4 rectangles over here. So we've got 4 rectangles, it's saying over here our lower sum is 1.75, our upper sum is 3.75, which matches what we come up with. Now, what we can do with GeoGebra is we can increase the, the number of um, rectangles. Okay, so what happens is I increase the number of rectangles. Our upper and lower sum get closer to each other, don't they? Okay, going to get closer to our real value. Right, you can see if I increase that, right, it's getting closer and closer until I get to a point where if I had them really, really close together, that's at 100, you know, they're very, very close, those two values. All right, we know the exact value is supposed to be 2.67. So again, that's 0.4 off of each of those. Now, if I increase that to maybe 1,000 or 10,000 rectangles, then you would see that will get closer each time. Get the idea? So the smaller the rectangles are, the closer you're getting to the real value. All right, so that sort of hopefully makes sense for you. All right, let's go back to our next example very quickly. So you got the idea there. Now what happens if it's a decreasing function? So what I've now done is I've used this function over here which is y equals 1 over x and I've gone from 1 through to 2 and I've broken that into 5, uh, five equal rectangles over here. All right, so if we start looking at the lower estimate, the key thing that I must do is I must find each of these points, okay, because I'm going to use my, my lower points. Now, in this particular case, because it's a decreasing function, my area for my lower estimate is going to be my right-hand point. All right, so just to save some time, all right, if we want to work out what our area of our lower estimate is going to be, all right, that's going to be simply the width of our box over here is in fact going to be one-fifth. That's how wide each of these boxes are. And then I'm just simply going to be adding all of these points here. So that point there is going to be 5, 6, 5, 1, 6, plus the next point there which is 5, 1, 7. plus 5 on 8, plus 5 on 9, plus over here which is 5 on 9, and the last one is going to be 5 on 10, or we can say that is equal to a half. So if I do that calculation on my calculator, you'll get the area of your underestimate. Now, in terms of saving time, I'm not going to worry about doing that. If I was now looking at doing my overestimate, I'm now going to be using my left-hand point. So it's now going to be these are my overestimate points. Okay, so I'm going to use my left-hand point for my overestimate. So you'll find that the area for your upper is going to be still one fifth, which is the width of the box. The bottom one's going to drop off, isn't it? And the other, the top one's going to drop on. So it's going to be simply one plus five on six plus five on seven 
plus 5 on 8 plus 5 on 9 and that will give me my estimate over there so we just quickly calculate those it's a pretty easy calculation so 0.5 is one one fifth is that times by we do 1 plus uh, 5 divided by 6 plus 5 divided by 7 plus 5 divided by 8 plus 5 divided by 9 okay this is going to be my upper estimate now if I go to my math button over here I can go to fraction and that will give me my fraction over there if I want to all right but I probably don't really need that so if we're thinking 0.745 or 746 so that's equal to 0 0.746 now the other thing I can do if I bring up the last thing I did uh, okay what do we have to change well we have to get rid of uh, the one and we have to change that to be a half don't we so if I insert something and divide that by 2 it will be essentially the same calculation that gives me 0.646 right so we know that that um, sorry back to the right one that's going to be equal to um, 0.646 so we would know that the area for this particular function is somewhere greater than 0 0.646 and less than 0 0.746 so probably my estimate would be that the true area is halfway between those two all right so um, that would be a probably a good way of doing that example there Right, now, if you want to have a go at doing some of these questions, what I'd like you to do is I'd like you to come to your textbook um, and I'd like you to come down to Exercise um, Exercise 1C Oh, actually, it's 2D, sorry. Exercise 2D and I'd like you to have a go at these first two there and I'd like you to do those for the trapezium method and also for the um, for the upper and lower rectangle method so you have to do the trapezium method by hand and then I'd like you to use GeoGebra to do that um, for for this particular function all right so um, it's really just a matter of making sure that you know what's going on and you can do these questions all right, so if you look in your textbook, there's a few examples there right, for you to have a go at doing. All right, so good luck with that, and I'll show you very quickly how to do that by using your calculator as well.